Before we start, I need to point out that the Swedish camera store Kamera Doktorn can only lend me this camera for one week. That is not enough to call this a review and it means that I have very few samples to show you. And on top of that, the RAW files are as of recording this not supported in Lightroom, so they will not look their best, because I always shoot RAW only and expose my photos as such, and without proper adjustments they will look pretty weird. So, not a lot of experience with the XE4, but I do have a lot of experience with the XE3, my favorite Fuji camera of all time, both for hobby shooting and professionally. And the new sensor is familiar as well from the X-Pro3. And the design and sensor from the X100V. So in this video I will still be able to give my impressions of the camera based on those experiences. The X-E4 comes with a couple of new features that I really like, a couple of compromises that I could live without and a few changes that I don't really care one way or the other about. Let's start with the ladder. It has the newest generation of sensors. It can give a nice sharp image but it's less stellar at high ISOs than the earlier generations. It has a selfie mode, something I don't see myself using, but it took me four days before I discovered that it was there. In other words, it doesn't get in the way or compromise the design, so who cares? They have changed the grip to the same design as the X100V with a slanted edge to catch the thumb instead of a bump. The old grip was just as comfortable, but this works too. A plus I will give it is that you won't accidentally hit the quick menu. It wasn't as huge of an issue on the X-E3 as the X-T30, but it could happen. Most of us use both the X-E3 and X-E4 with a thumbs up, so it doesn't really matter. They have removed the reader dial, but since the 27mm also has an aperture ring nowadays, I don't care. One customizable dial with a button is enough for me. I've had and enjoyed cameras with three command dials, as well as no command dials. Simply put, it's not an end-all feature. You lose a function button, but it has eight in total with the swipe motions. And I still stand by what I said in the XE3 review. The swipe commands work flawlessly every single time and I never accidentally activate them. The focus mode switch has been removed, but that doesn't matter either since when using manual glass you don't need to switch the mode, just put on the lens and start shooting. And for the rare occasions I do need to switch focus mode, it's quickly done with the button. Now let's move on to the positives. The build quality has been bumped up to the same level as the X100V, it feels much more solid all over. And when I reviewed the X100V, I said that there were two reasons to pick it up over the X100F, in my opinion. The slow motion and the tilt screen. The same is true here. The X-E3 is still a fine camera, but this has the 200 and 240 frames per second slow motion, which makes it a B cam for my work camera. And I did use it as such. But the big thing is the tilt screen. It is a huge deal for me. And if you follow this channel you already knew that. I can live with a fixed screen, I hate fully articulated, but I absolutely love a tilt screen. This feature alone sells the camera to me. It was basically my only complaint with the X-E3. It's very well implemented and sits absolutely flush with the camera body. And like I said, the selfie mechanism is well hidden. Another positive I must mention is the startup time, which is insanely quick. Perfect for a walk around jacket pocketable camera.
So let's move on to the negatives. I guess there never will be a free lunch or a perfect camera. Firstly, they have moved the joystick to the lower position, like for example the XT30. Very annoying. The regular strap lugs are gone and instead it has these. So if I buy it, I have to buy a new camera strap as well. And thirdly, now this could be a menu thing that I've been too lazy to find, but it seems that they have made the same mistake as on the X-Pro3 where the tilt screen doesn't deactivate the EVF sensor. Instead the sensor turns the LCD picture upside down. Huge bummer if it can't be sorted in the menu or via firmware. I mean the tilt screen is meant for low angles, but what good is it if it shuts off or turns the picture upside down when you hold it close to your body for stabilization? But that's it, that's my only real complaints, and there is no chance those could ever outweigh the tilt screen in my favorite Fuji line. So what you basically end up with is a baby X-Pro3, or if you will, a smaller version of the X100V, but with interchangeable lenses traded for the leaf shutter and built-in flash. Feel free to like, subscribe and argue with the online Fuji fanboy militia in the comment section, and also follow me on Instagram.